In 214, Sun Quan, at the age of 32, was master of the territory of Eastern Wu. In the name of his alliance with Liu Bei, who controlled the area to the west, and in order to destabilize Cao Cao's army, he accepted Liu Bei's request to attack Cao. Sun Quan and his army strong of 100,000 men marched towards Hefei, where only 7,000 of Cao Cao's soldiers were garrisoned. After several days of siege, the fortress was still unbreached. Furthermore, a plague spread in Sun Tran's army, forcing him to withdraw his troops. As they retreated to avoid contamination, he divided the army. From Hefei Fortress, Cao Cao's forces waited for the dispersed soldiers to engage in the crossing of Xiaoyao Ford. At the optimal moment, they left the fortress and charged. The disorganized troops of Sun Tran could not resist the assault and had to escape. Overall, the battle had been a disaster for the leader of Eastern Wu, who had been victorious many times in the past. Many other battles took place without significant changes in the borders. In 217, both sides got tired of constant skirmishes and threats of attack. Sun Quan, seeing no better option, decided to finally officially recognize Cao Cao as a legitimate representative of the Han Dynasty, becoming his subordinate. In exchange, Cao gave him several titles to ensure autonomy of his territory of Eastern Wu. Meanwhile, Liu Bei still controlled the southwest of China. In 219, Guan Yu, one of Liu Bei's general, attacked Cao's territory. He was a great warrior described as measuring about two meters tall, with an unparalleled beard of half a meter. Guan Yu wielded the legendary Green Dragon Crescent Blade, a pole arm weighing at least 20 kilograms. Sun Quan wanted to strengthen ties with the giant, proposing a marriage between his own son and Guan Yu's daughter. However, Guan Yu immediately rejected the offer and he humiliated the messenger. This infuriated Sun Quan. Moreover, the giant general started using Sun Quan's food reserves for his own campaign against Cao Cao. The infuriated leader of Eastern Wu sent Liu Meng to attack Guan Yu's forces. Guan Yu was captured alive and later executed. Sun Quan, having claimed back the whole of Jing province, now held the whole of southeast China. Liu Bei, enraged, immediately broke the old alliance he had made with Sun Quan back before the Red Cliffs. Although the three main forces had now more or less stabilized, with Cao in the north, Liu Bei in the west and Sun Quan in the southeast, an event would shake up the situation. The illustrious strategist Cao Cao died in 220 in his territory of the north of China. Soon after, his son Cao Pi forced the Han Emperor to abdicate, officially ending the Han Dynasty. Cao Pi took his place as Emperor of the State of Wei. The next year, in 221, Liu Bei jumped on the opportunity to create the State of Shu, declaring himself Emperor in turn. Sun Quan, however, although still technically master of the territory of Wu, found himself titleless, as the fall of the Han Dynasty invalidated his previous title of Marquis of Wu. He was now vulnerable both against the state of Shu to the west and the state of Wei to the north. Furthermore, Guan Yu's execution would not settle with Liu Bei, who gathered his army. Once again, Sun Quan had to prepare for war. To avoid having to defend himself on two fronts, Sun Quan decided to submit to the state of Wei. In return, on the 23rd of September 221, Cao Pi appointed him king of Wu, the domain he administered, and offered him the nine bestowments. These were a collection of gifts granted by the emperor to loyal subordinates. Sun Quan was the third person in history to receive them, the second being Cao Cao himself. In 221, Liu Bei launched an attack on Sun Quan's domain, going against the advice of many officials of the state of Shu, even having some of those who were protested thrown in prison. The main clash, which took place between 221 and 222, and would be known as the Battle of Yiling, saw Sun Quan's army of the Kingdom of Wu initially struggle against the Kingdom of Shu, However, the situation later turned and Sun Quan ended up inflicting a crushing defeat to Liu Bei. He would no longer be a threat to either Cao Pi or Sun Quan. To test his loyalty, Cao Pi then asked Sun Quan to send Sun Deng, his eldest son, who was about 13 years old, as a hostage in the capital city of Luoyang. This request would mark a turning point for the country. Sun Quan, now at the age of 40, swore he would no longer bow to any emperor. He promptly refused Cao Pi's order and declared the Kingdom of Wu an independent state. Cao Pi, however, would not tolerate such treason. The 30-year-old emperor of the state of Wei gathered more than 100,000 men and started marching south. Between 222 and 225, many battles were fought, but Sun Quan was always victorious, proving that the state of Eastern Wu was secure. 
While the conflict was going on, Liu Bei, Emperor of the State of Shu, died at the age of 62. Zhuge Liang, one of his diplomats and generals, assured the regents of the state, since Liu Bei's son, Liu Shan, was only 16 years old. He had met Sun Quan a little before the Battle of the Red Cliffs in 208. Furthermore, his elder brother, Zhuge Jin, served under the King of Wu. Zhuge Liang promptly restored the old alliance between the states of Wu and Shu. In 225, Cao Pi renounced trying to defeat Wu and retreated north. Annoyed and frustrated, he said, Heaven created the Yang Tsi to divide north and south. The following year, the Emperor of Wei died. Sun Quan had no enemies left to threaten his territory. That same year, in 226, a merchant arrived in Jiao Zhe province, current Vietnam. That person did not come from Southeast Asia, as all the other merchants, but from much farther. He was a Roman merchant from Daqin, the Chinese name for the Roman Empire. His name was Qian Lun. His western name could have been Leon. The prefect of the province sent the merchants to current Nanjing, where Sun Quan's court was located. The King of War, fascinated by this encounter, asked the man to report about his country and its inhabitants. Later, when the merchant headed back to his hometown, Sun Quan arranged an expedition to go with him. In 229, at the height of his power, Sun Quan decided to declare himself emperor as well. He said, I wouldn't have become an emperor today if Zhou Yu had not assisted me. Many officials of the state of Shu denounced the coronation, as they saw Shu as the legitimate successor of the Han Dynasty, and therefore an act of treason in Sun Quan's actions. Zhuge Liang, still regent, however recognized the state of Wu, and protested suggestions to break the alliance. Sun Quan relocated his capital city to the east, leaving his eldest son and crown prince Sun Deng, who was only 20 years old, to administer the west of the territory. Sun Deng was assisted by Luo Xin, general and imperial chancellor to the state of Wu. Sun Quan unfortunately started making a series of mistakes. In 230, he sent two generals and 10,000 sailors on an expedition to locate and settle legendary islands to the east. These were probably Taiwan and the Ryukyu Islands. They only reached one island and returned the next year. The vast majority of the sailors had died during the voyage. Enraged, Sun Quan ordered the execution of the two generals. In 232, he sent two other generals on a naval expedition to Liaodong Peninsula to purchase horses from the local administrator, Gong Sun Yuan. Yu Fan, an official and scholar, protested and tried to persuade Sun Quan to cancel the expedition, but the Emperor of Wu refused and had the official exiled. Yu Fan was right, the two generals were intercepted on their way back by the navy of Wei and killed. Realizing his mistakes, Sun Quan wanted to call Yu Fan back, but he had died during his exile. In 233, Gong Sun Yuan offered to pledge allegiance to the state of Wu, betraying the state of Wei that he served nominally. The Emperor of Wu was delighted, granting him titles and detaching 10,000 men to help him rebel. Once again, this was against the advice of nearly all of his officials. When the troops arrived, Gong Sun Yuan killed all the officers and took control of the soldiers. Sun Quan was absolutely infuriated and apologized to his advisors for his lack of judgment. In 234, to assist Zhuge Liang's expedition against the state of Wei, Sun Quan attacked Hefei as he had done back when Cao Cao was still alive. This time, however, it was not Cao Cao defending, but Cao Rui, his grandson. He had rebuilt a new fortress at Hefei. Sun Quan mobilized about a hundred thousand men. Cao Rui let him lay his siege, having previously told the garrison troops not to react. He waited for Sun Quan's army to run low on food, and then personally attacked with reinforcements. Sun Quan had to retreat again. The government of the Kingdom of Wu started showing weaknesses. Liu Yi, an official of the state, had regularly abused his powers in the past, falsely accusing many people of crimes to accomplish his purposes. More and more people started to speak out against him, even though they risked repercussions. In 238, Sun Quan realized his abuses and had him executed. Noticing all the mistakes and bad administration of the kingdom in the previous years, the emperor wrote a letter to Zhuge Jin and many other officials, blaming himself and asked them to warn him of any further mistakes he would make. Sun Quan attempted a final assault against the state of Wei in 241, which failed. He would never attack his northern enemy again. The same year, Sun Deng, the crown prince, died of illness at the age of 32. His father was deeply affected by this loss. He designated his second son, Sun He, as an heir, but gave another son, Sun Ba, an equivalent status. In 245, Sun Ba grew jealous and made plans to become the only heir. Liu Xin, the chancellor, tried to intervene to defend Sun He, but he was falsely accused of several crimes, which led him to lose Sun Quan's trust. In despair, he died the same year. 
Sun Tran's mental health greatly deteriorated in the following years. Five years later, the succession struggle was still not resolved. Sun Tran, angered by the hostile actions of Sun Ba, forced him to commit suicide. He also replaced Sun He that he had exiled by Sun Liang, his youngest son, as crown prince. He had all opposing advisors executed. In 251, Sun Tran elevated the new crown prince's mother, Consort Pan, as the first empress of Wu. Realizing he was aging, Sun Tran designated Zhuge Ke to be a regent for the young Sun Liang, who will one day succeed him. Empress Pan was murdered in 252, most likely by officials to avoid her taking power after the death of the emperor. Afflicted by this final loss, Sun Tron, Emperor of Wu, died on the 21st of May 252, at the age of 71. He was buried at Purple Mountain. Sun Liang, the Crown Prince, succeeded him as Emperor. Sun Tron, a young man who had shown great loyalty and honour to his late father and brother by avenging them and administering their conquests justly, later became a wise leader who developed the territory of Eastern Wu. In his last years, the accumulations of hardships he endured, mistakes he had made, and old age greatly weakened his mental stability. Nonetheless, Sun Tron played a decisive role in Chinese history, establishing one of the three kingdoms and changing the course of the Chinese civilization. Thank you for watching my video. Please like it and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below.